your house, you silly boy. It renders you powerless. Did you know that? Of course. Everyone knows that. That's Corey Feldman and Corey Haim in the 1980s classic The Lost Boys. The two were not only huge teen stars in the 80s, they were also best friends. They experienced Hollywood's highest highs, but also lowest lows. Falling victim to drugs, and as Feldman explains, even sexual abuse at the hands of some of Hollywood's biggest stars. I found some quaaludes. Let's do a quaalude together, and we had some girls over. So we all decided to do some quaaludes. Well, the girls left, and then... I remember I couldn't even stand up, so I crawled myself into my bedroom, and I crawled myself up to my bed, and I passed out. And he crawled himself next to me, and he passed out. And I figured we were asleep for the night. And all of a sudden, I wake up to him unbutting my pants. And I freaking jumped up, and I was like, yeah. I mean, I went off. Corey Feldman, the star and producer of the upcoming documentary, My Truth, The Rape of Two Corys, which is out on Monday night. He joins me now. So, sadly, as most people know, Corey Haim passed away. You guys were yes. very close. And he, there have been allegations that, I guess, men in Hollywood at the time when you guys were coming of age did things to you against your will and you've been trying to tell your story, but you've had a very hard time doing it. Explain what's happened. Well, it's been a long process, <clears throat> so this has been going on for quite some time. It started when I wrote my book. Well, it actually started before that when we, it was brought up as a topic on the, the Two Corys TV show on A&E back in 2007, 2008. But what happened since that time is, you know, Corey Haim passed away in 2010. So on March 10th is the 10-year anniversary of his passing. Um, in 2013, I wrote a best-selling New York Times book, uh, which was uh, called Choreography. We told the details of the story in that book. But when I went to print, even though I wrote everything down as it happened and with the names included in the book, the publishers, you know, attorneys and insurance people didn't like the fact that we were being so honest and they asked us to change the names so we changed the names there then we did a, a movie of the week a few years later uh, for the Lifetime channel and it was called The Tale of Two Corys same thing the producers wanted us to change the names in the script so you so had a lot of pressure the story, right from lawyers from powerful people in Hollywood and they don't want the names coming out and the names are going to come out on Monday night when this becomes available that's and right so, the allegation specifically, you were, I guess, molested, you say, by an older man when you were a child, and, and Corey... I was molested by two men. Two men. Two men molested me, and several men molested my best friend. How old were um, you when you were molested? I was 14 and 15 and 16, so it happened basically from, from the late part of 14 all the way through the middle part of 16. Were these two men kind of in the same social circle? Because you use the phrase pedophile ring, or it seems like a conglomeration of people. Absolutely, yeah. These people literally were all friends. They all hung out together. They all took notes from each other and basically compared notes. I mean, it was very, very sick. But, yes, the man who, in, first of all, the, the first man who molested me worked for my father. He was part of my father's company, which was a management company in Hollywood where they were grooming child stars of all things and he introduced me to this man this man came into my life he started uh feeding me drugs he started feeding me alcohol i'd never done a drug in my life i was a very you know conservative goody two-shoes kind of kid and all of a sudden this guy's you know hey try this try that and then he basically kept trying different mixtures on me until I passed out and he could take advantage of me, which he did on a regular basis. But the worst one was the guy who, you know, we all trusted. I started hanging out with him when I was 11 years old because my mom put me in his car and said, go with this guy because his dad is the head of casting for a major studio. And I'm not going to give it away. You can watch it in the movie. But the point is, is he was the head of casting for a major studio so obviously this is a great opportunity for you so get in the car with him and i start going off with this guy and next thing you know this guy is having these giant parties that only include all the most famous children in hollywood that's who would go to his private parties at his house and these kids were getting molested at this house so 
you know, is, is, is this guy that's still one active? piece of the puzzle? Uh, well, he's still alive. He's still on the streets. He's not in jail, and he's still out there. And it turned out that the guy who was supposedly his father wasn't his father at all, but was his gay lover. So that just goes to show you how twisted the whole situation was. Kids should have never been in that home. Are you going to go to the police about this once this I documentary did go to the police. drops? Oh, no, no. I went to the police back in 1993. And what happened? Back in 1993. Well, what happened was they were investigating Michael Jackson at the time. It was the first uh, Santa Barbara investigation. And they came to me and they said, we think your friend is a pedophile. You know, this is why. And I said, well, I, I'm sorry that you guys think that, but I don't have that experience with him. But I have been molested. I can tell you what a real pedophile is like because I've experienced it. Right. So, you know, this is what happened to me. All right. So and they didn't care about that at the time. They buried right. the information and they never investigated right. it. So where and can then people... I went back and filed, I filed another report two years ago and then they didn't, they didn't pursue that one because they said it was out of the statute of limitations so since such time we have actually helped to change the laws here in california oh, and now go. there's a new three-year window to do a look back on anything prior to 2017 which means now yep. that we're laying out the breadcrumbs investigators can follow the clues we drop in this film and if the da chooses to pursue it we can actually bring these guys in now at least for a civil trial right all right well the window's there you got to take advantage of that and where can people That's see right. the documentary on monday night so it's only streaming, it's a live global streaming event, which means it's playing all over the world at the same time. You can still get tickets at www.mytruthdoc.com. Right. Mytruthdoc.com. Tickets are only there $20 for the entire household. Everybody can watch it together, and it's an important film. Please don't miss it. All right, Corey Feldman, there he is. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. God bless.